Listen while the makers of Rexall drug products and 10,000 independent Rexall family druggists bring you Dick Powell as Richard Diamond, private detective. Good evening. This is your Rexall family druggist speaking to you for the 10,000 independent druggists who have made the word Rexall part of our own store names. We've done that because we recommend and sell the 2,000 or more drug products made by the Rexall Drug Company. Like Plenamins, for example, Rexall's famous multivitamin capsules. Two Plenamins a day give you more than your daily minimum requirement of every vitamin for which such requirements have been established, plus valuable liver concentrate and iron. What's more, Plenamins cost you only pennies per day. Ask for Plenamins at Rexall drugstores everywhere. And remember, you can depend on any drug product that bears the name Rexall. Good health to all from Rexall. Now your Rexall family druggist brings you a transcribed half hour with Richard Diamond, private detective, starring Dick Powell. I'm a detective agency. We trail them, we nail them. If they're guilty, we jail them. No charge for poetry. Oh, no. Edgar Guest with a shoulder holster. Hello, Helen, baby. Rick, guess what's in town? Unless I win something, I give up. The carnival. Well, is the balloon concession tied up yet? Oh, Rick, I'm serious. I haven't been to a carnival since I was little. Let's go tonight. You mean peanuts, popcorn, Cracker Jacks, and all that? Yes. Sounds awful. Oh, now, Rick. Uh, okay, honey. I'll be around at eight. Shall I wear my knickers? Rick. Bye. That night, I picked up Helen, and we went to the carnival. There were more people on the midway than Rexall has stores, and we got pushed so much, I felt like the tax bill in Congress. Helen decided she wanted a Cupid doll, so we stopped at the shooting gallery. That's pretty good shooting. Think nothing of it. Just three more bullseyes and you win a dial. Well, here's your dial. Where'd you ever learn to shoot like that? At the skeet club. Would you like to try a shot, Rick? Uh, no thanks. Come on. Oh, Rick, isn't this doll cute? I... And now, oh, your amazement and proof of my statement, I'll ask him to step out here. And here he is, ladies and gentlemen, the one and only Samson, the strong man. Step right up, folks. He'll thrill you with his amazing feats of strength. Now, crowd right in. Don't be shy. There is no... Standing on the platform with the biggest collection of muscles I'd ever seen. Samson looks like an overgrown orangutan. And at least three tigers had contributed their all to the loincloth he wore around his middle. Samson, the great. And now, our sensational offer. $100 to any man who will step up here and defy the mighty Samson to put him to sleep by squeezing his chest. Now, it is harmless, my friends. And if any one of you daring gentlemen think the mighty one cannot put you to sleep with a mere squeeze, then step right up. If Samson fails, then $100 is yours. Well, Rick. Now, I tell you, friends... Well, Rick, what? Don't you want to show off? Not my insides. Rick, you mean you're afraid just to let him squeeze you? you Honey, I'm afraid to let him breathe on me. Come on, let's go see that fortune teller. I steered Helen toward the next booth before she could talk me into anything my bones would regret tomorrow. The sign outside the tent read, Madam Tanya, your past, your present, your future. And inside, we found Madam T staring intently into a crystal ball. She wore gypsy clothes and a heavy makeup that covered what might have been very lovely features. Welcome to the inner sanctum. Hmm. Haven't I heard you on the radio? She didn't crack a smile, and I didn't exactly blame her. She motioned us into chairs around the crystal. The room was decorated in about the same motif as the tattooed lady and would have impressed a man with a bad case of DTs. Madame Tanya went back to staring at the crystal, so I followed suit. I couldn't see a thing in the glass ball, but then maybe she picked up television on clear night. 
the crystal grows dim. Ah, I can see that you are both very much in love. Well, go on. It is good. This man adores you. He worships you. He idolizes you. Wake me up when I propose. You are an unbeliever? Oh, let's be modern. I'm a cynic. The crystal does not lie. But to make certain, I will consult the cards. She picked up a deck that was too big for poker and too small for canasta. I should pay to watch a girl play solitaire. I nudged Helen. We were about to leave when a tall, thin young man pushed back the canvas flap and walked in. Hey, Tony, I just... Oh, I didn't know you were busy. Excuse me. The boy pushed back the flap to go out and then made a sharp, gurgling noise in his throat. He doubled with pain and fell to the floor. Even from where I was sitting, I could see the big, ugly bullet hole in his chest. Bruce! Don't scream. We'll have the whole crowd in here. Stand back, Helen. Is he hurt bad? You don't need a crystal ball for this, honey. He's dead. Even under the heavy makeup, I could see her face turn pale. I sent Helen to call the police, and then I looked around outside. The killer had either used a silencer or else the shot was not heard in the confusion. Twenty minutes later, Lieutenant Max Talbert arrived, followed by Sergeant Otis wearing his Hopalong Cassidy badge. Hi, Rick. Well, hello, Max. Where's Walt Levinson? He's on vacation, Rick. I've taken over his cases. Also his problems, I see. Hello, Otis. Hi, Shamus. So there's been another murder, huh? And you just happened to be here. Sounds suspicious to me. Otis, why don't you stick your head through a piece of canvas and let people throw baseballs at it? And get my brains knocked out? Oh, no. Why not? You got nothing to lose. Rick, uh, Miss Asher told me over the phone what happened. It sounds like we'll be looking for a needle in a haystack. You want to work on the case with us? Not particularly. I just happen to be here, that's all. Yeah. I still think that's awful funny. Otis, I'll send you my confession in the morning. So long, Max. It's not that I wasn't interested in the case. I was. But in my business, you can't poke your head into murder on a gratis basis. So I took Helen home. The next morning, I went to my office as usual, and then around 10 o'clock, I had a visitor. Mr. Diamond, I need your help. Well, thank my lucky stars. Sit down. Thank you. She looked like a well-dressed Lady Godiva, minus horse. I stifled a drool as she sat down, and then I realized that I'd seen her before. This was Madame Tanya, minus the heavy makeup, gypsy garb, and the phony accent. It's about last night's murder. You see, it's not the first. Four men have been killed within a year, and all because of me. Go on. My real name is Tony Lawrence. About a year ago, a boy I knew asked me for a date, and we went out. Next day, he was killed. There were two more after that who showed an interest in me. They both died, too. It's getting so every time a man looks at me twice, he's murdered. Well, it's a pleasant way to die. But uh, what about this kid last night? Well, he, he'd asked me for a date at a small party we had after the show one night. He worked in the show, but I hardly even knew him. I see. Did you tell Lieutenant Talbert all this? Oh, yes. He says he'll have to make a systematic check on everyone on the show. That could take months. Yes, it could. Talbert's a good cop, though. Why'd you come to me? I want you to go back to the lot with me. I'll arrange to get you a job there. Honey, I got a job. I'm a private detective. Oh, I know. I'll pay you what you ask. Oh, well, that uh, understanding will just continue. Well, maybe working undercover, you'll be able to find out who's behind all this. Well, I, uh... Oh, I'm sure it'll work. I'll get you a job as Barker for the girl show. Mm. You know, I've always wanted to run away with the girl show. We drove back to the carnival, and I became Rick Diamond, boy Spieler. The kid who was murdered last night had asked Tony for a date at a small party. There were only three other people at that party, and it seemed logical that one of them was the killer. First on the party list was Chuckles, the clown. Tony took me over to his trailer. Here we are. I think you'll like Chuckles. He's got a great sense of humor. Well, Tony, come on in. Can't stay long, Chuckles. I want you to meet Rick Diamond. He's the new Barker on the girls' show, and the boss wants me to introduce him to everyone. Well, any friend of Tony's is a friend of mine. Glad to know you, Rick. <laughs> How are you, Chuckles? Yeah, oh, just fine. <laughs> so you got the job at the Shakers, huh? You ever bark before? Only at pet shows. Oh, well, you'll do a good business over there. All the old fogies go to see Karen. She's the head shaker. 
Is that all she shakes? <laughs> hey, hey, that's pretty good. Put some gags in your pitch. The crowd eats it up. We'd better go, Ray. You start to work soon. Yeah, well, drop around any time, huh? <laughs> Number two on the suspect list was Samson, the strong man. I remembered him from last night and took a last look at my fingers as we shook hands. Glad to meet you. Do you wrestle? No, but I'm a demon with jacks. Oh, I can't find no one around here to play with. Oh, you poor kid. Have you tried the lion cake? Rick's going to pitch the girl show, Samson. Oh, fooey, that's no fun. Hey, look, kid, you work out with me, and someday you can be a strong man, too. Well, that's a tempting offer, but I'm afraid I'm just a natural-born sissy. Well, if you change your mind, come around and... And uh, you'll change my posture, I know. Glad to have met you, Samson. So long. Playful little character. He's really very nice. Hey, let's stop here for a hot dog. Good. My favorite meal. Give the man a cooked one, Maisie. Sure thing, Tony. Uh, loaded with onions, honey. No date tonight. Aren't you hungry, Tony? Uh-uh. I've got to change for my act soon. Tell me, uh, how did a pretty girl like you get tied down to a crystal ball? Oh, I don't know. I grew up on shows. Mom and Dad were wire walkers. Well, I don't like high places, so I decided to be an actress. Mm-hmm. Well, after a few feeble stage attempts, I came back here. Now you do your acting in a tent. That's right. But these murders aren't solved soon. I'll be on the move again. Those, uh, those two characters we just met, do you think one of them might be the killer? Gee, I don't know. They've always been friendly with me, but... Well, they did overhear that boy ask me for the date. Karen was there, too. Oh, yes, uh, the shaker, as Chuckles put it. You'll probably meet her later on. She's always quick to discover a new man. Well, I can hardly wait. Say, I'd better get back. I'll see you after the show tonight. Here you are, mister. It's got enough onions to keep you out of circulation for a week. Tony walked away, stopped, turned, and gave me a smile that made me feel warmer than the hot dog I began munching. She was a very pretty girl. Pretty enough for someone to kill any man she got interested in. And that someone was either a clown, a strong man, or a hula dancer. Yeah, it was quite a mess, and here I was in the middle of it. But as P.T. Barnum always said, as a sucker born every minute... Before we continue with the adventures of Richard Diamond, private detective, here's your Rexall family druggist. Whenever you develop a simple headache, what's the first thing you think of for fast relief? Why, aspirin, of course. Right. But it's also smart to think one step further and choose Rexall aspirin. <laughs> Give me three good reasons why. Okay. First, every Rexall aspirin tablet contains five full grains of pure aspirin. Second... There is no faster-acting aspirin made. What do you mean by that? I mean that when taken with water, a Rexall aspirin tablet is ready to go to work for you even before it reaches your stomach. Sounds swell so far. What's the third reason? Just this. In the economy size 200-tablet bottle, Rexall aspirin costs you little more than three-tenths of a cent per tablet. That I'll remember. And remember this also. You can depend on any drug product that bears the name Rexall. And now back to tonight's adventure with Richard Diamond, Private Detective, starring Dick Powell. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Step right up and see Karen and her friends. Come on, boys, don't be bashful. Put your wives on the Ferris wheel drawn in. Get away from me, son. You bother me. Only one-tenth of a dollar plus 15 cents in your old set. You'll see care of the blonde bombshell. That night, I yelled my head off. The crowd was heavy, and the men poured into the tent until there was panting room only. I looked at my watch and saw that I had four more hours to go. So I warned my tonsils and kept right at it. My mistake, mister. Go on in. Four hours later, I felt like a politician and had a voice like Andy Devine. Tony met me after the crowds had left, and we had a Coke. Tired. Tired? Me? No, oh, no. 37 hours sleep and I'll be as good as new. <laughs> You'll get used to it. Oh, do I have to? I thought the girl show would be great, but they're inside. I'm outside. Well, you'll meet Karen soon. Ah, uh, that's some consolation. No, I'm saying, while I think of it, maybe we'd better not be seen together so much. I got a 
great affection for life. Yeah, I'd thought of that. You'd better go on from here alone. But, Ricky, be careful. I gave her my for you I will look, and then she left. I had been assigned a bunk in one of the trailers and was about to head toward it when something grabbed my arm. At first, I thought one of the snakes had left the charmer's neck. But this one had long blonde hair. Hi. My name's Karen. You got a match? I'd heard the match line in a movie, but what this gal carried around could never pass the censor board. I'd been singing her praises all evening, and now I could see that I'd been guilty of understatement. Thanks. Oh, that's all right. I'm loaded with them. <laughs> Hey, you're cute. The last guy had a lousy voice, but you're cute. What's your name? Diamond. You can call me Rick. You want to buy me a Coke? Sure. Well, never mind. I just wanted to see if you wanted to. Well, any more party games up your sleeve? Oh, sure. Lots more. Uh, I've seen you with Tony. You like her? Well, shouldn't I? I don't know. Only the way things have been happening, it ain't so healthy. Yeah, so I heard. You like her? She's all right. Burns me, though. She makes more dough than I do, and she's strictly no talent. She just makes up them stories. Now, me, I give the boys the money's worth. Well, uh, I bet you do. You know, I bet we get along real swell, you and me. Well, I, I hope we do. You know, there's nothing but jerks around here. You look sort of like a gentleman. Sorry, I'm, uh, I'm just tired. Oh, I like it. You, uh, want to take me into town and go dancing? Well, I'm all worn out tonight. Oh, but... I don't really want to go. Just want to know if you'd like to take me. Oh, we're back at that. Yes, I would like to take you. Good. Oh, gee, it's a nice night for a walk. Oh, would you like uh, to... Uh, let's not go around again. <laughs> Say, you're awful cute. Good night. That night, I went to bed with a lot on my mind and an ice pack around my neck. I was after a murderer who left no clues. The only apparent motive was to keep men away from Tony. Chuckles or Samson? Maybe they were in love with Tony. On the other hand, Karen might be jealous enough of Tony to commit murder. I didn't count sheep that night, just characters... Next morning, while I was roaming around the carnival grounds, I found Chuckles sitting on the steps of his trailer, sewing a bright-colored costume. Well. Hi there. Sit down. Uh, thanks. Hey, you're pretty handy with that needle. Oh, you gotta be. How did it go last night? Well, I'm a little better, but I'm in no condition for a cigarette test. <laughs> I'm glad I don't have to yell my lungs out every night. I just stand around and let people laugh at me. I have a friend named Otis who does the very same thing. Say, you should have been around yesterday if you like excitement. Guy was murdered. Oh? What happened? Somebody shot him. Seems like the only reason was because he liked Tony. You mean the girl who showed me around yesterday? Yeah, that's her. Oh, I guess not many guys give her the eye. No. <laughs> yeah, there's one fellow that kind of likes her, though. A guy by the name of Leonardi. Oh? He don't work here no more. He's on another show. Tony and him write a lot, though. I'm always mailing letters for him. Well, maybe they're just friends. Yeah, that's what she says. He worked on this show before I came over here. I don't really know him, but I bet there's something between those two. Maybe he's the one behind all this. Could be. Well, it's not good to poke your nose into other people's business. You're telling me. Well, I guess I'll look over the show. Yeah, well, drop around any time. <laughs> I left Chuckles and wandered on up the midway. About half past the merry-go-round, I ran into Karen, the curve cram kid. Hi, handsome. Hi, yourself. You know, I dreamed about you last night. You do wonders for my ego. Mm, you do wonders for my dream. Uh, care if I walk along with you? Not at all. Uh, Karen, do you know a guy named Leonardi? Oh, sure. Used to work here. Why, why do you ask? Well, I've heard he might be interested in Tony. That's risky business, you know. Tony and Leonardi? Oh, no. Now, somebody's pulling your leg. Oh, why Rick, I've been looking... Oh, I didn't know you had company. Hello, Karen. Hi. I I just thought I'd see if you were getting along all right, Rick. He's in good hands. That's all a matter of opinion, dear. Uh, look, why don't you girls amuse yourselves while I make a phone call? Karen, you do the shimmy while Tony tells your fortune. I'll be right back. 
both girls were exchanging icy stares as I pulled up my coat collar and walked away. So far, I'd accomplished nothing, and the case was still as mixed up as a chef's salad. I called Max to see if he'd uncovered anything on the latest murder. Homicide, Lieutenant Talbot speaking. Max, this is Rick. How are you coming on that circus murder? Oh, Rick, what a headache. Get screwy every minute. Yeah, I know. The fortune teller hired me. Oh, well, then you know almost as much as I do. Uh, there's one new development, though. Well, don't be greedy, Grandpa. Shoot. That's what someone else did last night. And a guy by the name of Leonardi. Leonardi. The guy Chuckles told me about. The one who liked Tony. Max filled in with the details. The killer had written a letter to Leonardi and told him to come to a hotel room in the city because Tony was sick and had been asking for him. Then the killer rigged up a gun trap so that when Leonardi opened the door, the gun would go off and kill him. Only Leonardi was still alive. The killer had made one mistake. I thanked Max and went back to Tony's tent, certain I could use that mistake to my advantage. Hello, Rick. Hey, where did little Miss Wigglehips go? I don't think she liked your leaving her. She went back to her trailer. Mm, good. Now, Tony, you told me that only three people were present at the party when Bruce asked you for the date. Are you certain of that? Why, yes. Just Samson, Chuckles, and Karen. They dropped in after the show, and we had coffee. Mm-hmm. Well, I want you to invite our three friends over again after the show tonight. Will you do that? Well, yes, but I don't understand. I went back to the girls' show and began my afternoon pitch. That evening, I went through it again, and then around midnight, I went to the party in Tony's tent. They were all three there when I entered. Sit over here, honey. Thanks, Karen. Hi, you weakling. Oh, please, Samson. I'm sensitive. <laughs> Say, you should have seen the matinee today. We did a bang-up routine and the crowd ate it up. We did the old one where we all pile into a car. You know, you... They were all relaxed, and I decided it was time to try my long shot. Chuckles was just finishing his story as I took a deep breath and crossed my fingers. Back, and then we all pile out of this little car. Oldest trick in the book, but they loved it. Uh, Chuckles... Remember that guy you told me about the other day? I think his name was Leonardi. Sure, what about him? Well, nothing. I was just curious. Did you know him, Samson? Know him? Why, Leo and I used to room together where we worked here. Him and me is the best of buddies. And you, Karen, you said earlier that you knew him, right? Yeah, but I didn't think he was so great. He was nothing but a pest. Hey, you can't talk that way about my buddy. Oh, Samson, please. This is a party. Yeah, take it easy, Muscles. Now, let's see. You both knew Leonardi. That lets you out and leaves only Chuckles. You said earlier that you joined the show after Leonardi left, didn't you, Chuckles? Yeah. <laughs> Say, why all these questions about Leonardi? Because you tried to kill him last night. What? You thought there was something between Tony and him. What's this? <laughs> it's a joke, that's all. Yes, clown, but the joke's on you. You're the only one who didn't know Leonardi. The only one who would rig up a gun trap the way you did. What are you... What are you getting at? When Leonardi opened the door, the bullet went over his head. Well, over his head? That's right. You rigged the trap to shoot a normal-sized man. You're the only one here who didn't know Leonardi, didn't know he was a midget. Well, you, you're kidding. <laughs> He's a midget? That's right. Still feel like laughing? Well, I, I, well, it, it, it's on me. <laughs> the joke's on me. <laughs> you tried to kill my little pal? And, and there wasn't anything between Tony and him, huh? <laughs> Just friends, like she said. <laughs> Oh, what a laugh, a midget. <laughs> Why, you dirty... Take it easy, Samson. Little Leo's my pal. I'll kill this bum when he wakes up. Never mind, friend. That's the job for the state. And so, dear Helen, my life at the carnival ended and I have come back to you. Beaten, perhaps, but ready to continue my valiant fight against the forces of evil. Justice must prevail. Truth must march ahead to... Oh, Rick. Quiet, I'm auditioning for Portia Face's life. Rick. Hmm. Was that Karen person pretty? Mm Mm-hmm. What kind of a dance did she do? Well, she started by, uh... And then she... Well. Oh. One of those. Mm-hmm. 
only more so. Well, I hope you enjoyed yourself. Helen, you're so thoughtful. Rick. Yes, baby? I wonder how I'd be doing that. Doing what? Helen, please. This is more your type. Sweet and lovely, sweeter than the roses in May. Sweet and lovely, heaven must have sent her my way. Skies above me, never were as blue as her eyes. And she loves me, who would want a sweeter surprise? When she nestles in my arms so tenderly There's a thrill that words cannot express In my heart a song of love is taunting me Melody haunting me Sweet and lovely Sweeter than the roses in May And she loves me There is nothing more I can say. So that's my type, is it? Come here. Mm. Wow. Well. Oh, I guess a man's entitled to change his tune. <laughs> Again, here's your Rexall family druggist. Tonight, I'd like to say a special word to users of mineral oil. I know that what you search for is one with an extra heavy body. Well, Rexall mineral oil is refined by a special process to obtain just that. And because it's so exceptionally pure and bland, Rexall mineral oil is non-irritating and non-habit forming. What's more, it's tasteless, odorless, colorless. Next time, try Rexall mineral oil. And remember, you can depend on any drug product that bears the name Rexall. Good health to all from Rexall. Richard Diamond, Private Detective, stars Dick Powell in the title role and is written by Richard Carr, with music composed and conducted by Frank Worth. Featured in tonight's cast were Virginia Gregg, Bill Johnstone, Wilms Herbert, Lucille Meredith, Parley Bear, Joe Duval, and Joe Gilbert. Richard Diamond, Private Detective, is transcribed in Hollywood by Jaime Del Valle. This is Bill Foreman inviting you to be with us next Wednesday at this time when we will again bring you Dick Powell as Richard Diamond, Private Detective. Hi, you beautiful. Get lost, Bristlepuss. You need a shave. But I have shaved. What else do you want me to do? Silly boy, she wants you to go stag. Go stag? But why? Because stag is Rexall's exclusive line of men's good grooming aids. Like stag brushless shave cream. No fuss, no massage, just smooth it on and presto, you get a clean, close shave. Your face stays smooth and whiskerless all day long. I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll go stag. That's it. Join the stag line now at Rexall drugstores everywhere. Yes, to make girls care. Go stag. Wednesdays this fall, hear Groucho, Gildy, and the Halls of Ivy on NBC.